Welcome, today I introduce a 2023 Triumph Tiger 900 GT Pro to the channel. I also include some video where I'm struggling trying to figure out how to get it into its different ride modes. I've got this figured out in, in later videos and I'll talk about how to do it. On the, I took one very short ride on this motorcycle yesterday, which was Thursday. I picked it up on a Wednesday. Today is Friday and I really don't have time to do a whole lot today either. Uh, Joey and I are headed out with a travel trailer to Utah to meet her daughter and some of her friends. And we're going to help out with the grandson and do some visiting for about a week and then probably head home. I think you can uh, see the screen on the motorcycle in front of me. You can uh, have a white background, a black background. At the moment I'm kind of liking the black. Uh, the information on the left there, there's about five or six things you can cycle through depending on what you want to see. The screen layout can be changed also to about four or five different screen layouts. At the moment, this is the one that I think I'm the most interested in. Can I go? Okay. The windscreen has about five different positions. It can be set higher. I've got it in its lowest at the moment, which seems pretty good. Not getting much of any wind noise inside the helmet, even with my face shield up. Of course, I'm not going real fast, but still. At the end of this ride, I will uh, come back on the interstate, so I'll get some high speed riding there, and we'll see just how loud the wind noise is, and maybe the microphone will work better. The microphone uh, worked better up to 40, 50 miles an hour with better wind protection, but it still doesn't do well at highway speed. So anyway, why am I on a Triumph Tiger 900 GT Pro? The Triumph Tiger was always a bike I was interested in, but I didn't think I'd be able to find one within a range I'd be willing to pay. Now this was uh, just almost right at two years since it was bought by the original owner. It had 4,917 miles on it at the beginning when I got it. I think I rode 20 or 30 miles yesterday. I'll probably do a lot more than that just now. But again, why, um, why Triumph Tiger? I think I've said this in most of the videos I've posted for the last couple months. Suzuki put a stop, stop sale on the uh, Blue Storm 800 AE the same day I thought I was going to buy one. And it's been going for about two months now. I don't have any idea when it's going to end. I mean, it could be over tomorrow. But on the other hand, we're uh, starting to get out of our um, summer, summer weather pattern. It's starting to feel cooler anyway. It's not fall, but I mean, definitely feeling cooler. And the nice riding weather is not going to last a whole lot longer up in Mount Shasta in my area. Of course, if I, all I want to do is uh, go lower towards uh, Redding. I can ride year around there, and I just may do that. I'm sure that I kind of lost um, faith in getting the V Strom. And my wife and I saw somebody riding a Triumph Tiger at a gas station a few days before we bought this. And she makes a comment, boy, that bike is so pretty. And we both have good memories of a uh, Tiger 800 XC that we uh, owned back, I think we bought it back in 2011. So I said, you know, I hadn't looked at a while. I'm gonna go online and see what I can see for for used uh, Triumph Tiger 900s. And I found that uh, first I didn't see hardly any being sold by individuals. I tried Moto Hunt, Moto Hunt, Cycle Cycle Trader, stuff like that. Uh, also Craigslist, but I saw the Euros Cycle in the Reno location. They have uh, three Nevada locations. One in Las Vegas, I don't know the other, but uh, in Reno. And they had, not this bike that I'm on, but they had a white 2023 Tiger uh, 900 GT, not the GT Pro. But it's a nice bike. And it only had 415 miles on it. Oh, what the heck? And they had it discounted 
I forget what the actual price they had on it, but to put it out the door price, that's after you pay their, you know, the dealer board money and the state board money that most stuff doesn't have to get, but uh, of uh, $11,573. I think the actual list of price on the bike was ten ninety nine, maybe, one ten thousand nine hundred ninety nine. Which, uh, for the used price, that was cheaper than a new Peace Charm 800 DE would be, but it was still quite a bit more than that discounted one would have been. Well, what kind of started going through my head then was that. You know, it's really nice, by the way. I've been, I'm riding with my face shield up, and uh, this blistery has given me enough protection. I'm not feeling like I really haven't put it down just yet at 47 pounds an hour. Anyway, back to uh, that uh, white 2023 I was thinking about getting. And I liked it well enough, I called up a salesman there. His name was Chris Tucker at uh, Euro Cycle Reno. And we started in process to buy the thing. I sent him my driver's license information. I put a $1,000 deposit down or tried to. They have an online way of doing it and malfunction, but that's another story. But it was going pretty far along in it. Uh, and on his uh, website that he was looking at for uh, Euro Cycle Reno, it didn't show that it was sold. And it was actually in his store, so I mean, it was right there. He was looking at it. And so I thought, okay, I bought the white one, GT, 415 miles on it. And then I get a call back from him. I called me on the phone. We were doing texting, phoning, emails, all kinds of different ways. And he says, I got some bad news. My uh, manager uh, went online to the company website. And at that point, he suddenly found out that uh, this motorcycle had been sold for one of the other locations. I don't know if it was Las Vegas or where, but somebody else had already bought it, even though it was a Reno. It didn't matter. We got three stores you could buy from any one of the stores. So the was gone, and I said, okay, fine, I guess I'm not buying a Tiger, and I'll keep waiting for a V-Strom. And then he came back with me, well, you know, we have another motorcycle here. It's another 2023 Tiger, Triumph Tiger 900, but it's a GT Pro. Got 4,917 miles on it, and they had a price on it, uh, I think $1 under 13000 basically 13000 is what they're asking for. I mean, it's still low miles, but pristine, had a few extra things on it that were kind of nice. And then here's the kicker. I just told them, well, you know, that costs a lot more than one I was quite to get, which, you know, they had a $2,000 higher price on that. And he says, well, let me do some checking, but what would you do if I told you I could get it? to look for the same at the door price of the white one. And you get $11,573. And I had to think for about two seconds and said, sure. The GT Pro, if anybody wanna look some up, it's got, has got a whole lot of features that the GT doesn't have, like heated hand grips, heated seats, for the driver and the passenger. And on and on and on. There's a lot of things this has. It's got an electrically adjustable rear shock. I mean, you can just go through your videos on your screen and set it to firm or soft any way you want it. It has a fully adjustable suspension, which I don't think, I don't remember if the GT had it or not. But anyway, just lots of stuff on this. And I'd already looked at it, so it's too expensive. But when he said that to me, you know, it took me about two seconds to say, sure. <laughs> So he went and checked in with his manager. The manager said, go for it. So I made my deal. That was on Wednesday, Thursday. Man, it's a little over a four-hour drive to get to Reno from Mount Shasta. So I drove my truck down, left early in the morning. I think I was on the road by 6.30. Got there before 11. Did all the paperwork, saw the bike, and it looked good in the pictures, but you know what? It looked a whole lot better up close. I mean, the bike was just pristine, really nicely taken care of. So we did the deal, they uh, tried to sell me uh, an extended warranty for another 1400 or so, and they then basically said no thanks, and they didn't give me any grief about it, so it really wasn't, wasn't a hard sell or anything, so I didn't mind that. And then a couple of other uh, large, strong guys helped me load the motorcycle up into my truck, 
and I took it home. And I got home, uh, gosh, I'm, I'm thinking around four o'clock on Wednesday. So again, we're still getting ready for this uh, trip we're making to Utah to meet our daughter and, uh, well, it's our daughter's best friend in high school and she's kind of remained her best friend forever. So anyway, Thursday, I was busy getting the trailer and had to get some work done on the truck to get it ready for the trip. Got all that stuff done, did some more work on the trailer today. Still a little more to do, which I'm gonna have to do once I get back, but we're getting close. And I mean, I had to ride this bike a little longer ride before we uh, took off. It'll be over a week before we get back. But the short little ride I took yesterday, I deliberately took it on uh, a rough road that uh, gave me trouble on the GSX 8S. It was great on the KLX 300. It was that Forest Road 31, but on my KLX ride to the end of the uh, end of the earth, I think it tower to something like that. KLX was smooth on the GSX was uh, kind of rattle your teeth out. So I took this over the, some of that and. It did very, very well, as I expected. Now this is not the Rally Pro, which is their most dirt-oriented one. It's the uh, GT Pro, but it's got a 19-inch front wheel. The previous owner put new tires on it before he traded it in. And the tires are tires that I have been thinking about putting on the V-Strom 800 DE when I bought it. They are uh, Dunlop, Dunlop Trail Max Mission. And I've seen lots of things. You know, some people are so so on them, other people say they're the best thing ever. And there are a number of other brands of tires that are kind of in that same category. But in short, I mean, it's a good tire you put on for what I want to do, dirt roads and pavement. So I was happy about that. Had some uh, crash guard, lower crash guards installed on this, and I haven't decided if I want to put up the ones on or not. I mean, that was an extra. And honestly, uh, having 4,900 miles on this instead of 415 is really immaterial to me. The bike is still pretty darn new. I haven't really gotten mods on it yet. I got my handlebar bag that I was using on the GSX 8S, and I've got the tail bag that I have been using on my KLX 300 just to give me a little bit of storage. I think I'll probably wait till next spring, but I think I probably will get some panniers and. Now again, why did I want this instead of the Rally Pro? The Rally Pro would have been pretty tall. I would have had to lower it immediately, just like I was going to have to do with the face drop. You know, it's probably similarly tall. You know, which would have been okay. I could have lowered it, but I mean, it would have been requiring that right off the bat. More expensive bike. Uh, I didn't find one anywhere that was anywhere close to the price I paid for this. So I mean, that wasn't really an issue either. Now, it's kind of a... Like buying a new car almost, you know, the way they do the paperwork and such, whereas uh, Wayne over at Chico's kind of old school. I mean, you just go through everything almost instantly, no hard sell on this or that, and you're done. I really liked Wayne. Still do, but... Until I get another cycle, I won't be thinking about him anymore either. I won't be thinking about anybody. And I haven't had this bike long enough to even really start the honeymoon phase yet, but I think I'm going to like this for quite a while. It helps that I've owned a Triumph before, but this is so different and so much better. And going back to why the 19-inch wheel. It's got a low seat height on it. Uh, I can uh, almost flat foot on both sides. Not quite as good as the, on the GSX 8S. This bike is lighter than the V-Strom 800 DE by, I don't know, 20 or 30 pounds. It's got more power. It's got 94 horsepower versus the 982 the V-Stroms have. Not a big deal. The 82 was just fine. Oh, I didn't say that, but the um, MSRP on this bike now, if you're going to buy one, is I think over $17,000. At the time this bike was sold, it was like sixteen and a half dollars or something, thousand. So I think the way they did their paperwork on this, they showed that it was uh, sold at 10,500, and you know that extra 11 or 1,200 was your typical crapola that goes on. Still, I'm not unhappy with the price. I really think it worked out well. Oh, I also did a search online uh, after I bought this, <laughs> after the fact, trying to see what uh, kind of prices I could find on this in the whole country. I couldn't find anything that even came within a few thousand of it. Nothing touched it. I was looking at used bikes. So, 
I may find out different, but at the moment I'm still pretty happy with the deal. There were a few little issues with the bike. I didn't notice until I got home, but uh, the previous owner took off the passenger foot pegs. I assume they're sitting in his garage somewhere, but he didn't include them when he traded it in, which means that I will have to uh, buy some passenger pegs for this and the bracket for it as well, but uh, won't be till next spring, but I think Jolene's gonna wanna go for some rides. Good idea not to do it until I'm really comfortable on the bike. And it feels really good. I mean, it probably weighs 40 pounds more than uh, my GSX 8S. It's a physically larger bike. It's still lighter than what the V-Strom would have been. And unlike the V-Strom, this comes with factory cruise control. It's really nice. Tried it a little bit yesterday, and I'm on a windy road, so it's not necessarily the best thing to do, but. I just think I could give my throttle hand a rest here. I just turned it on. Cruise control will work from anywhere from 19 miles an hour to 100 miles an hour. Mm, Got to think about that one. I guess those European Autobahns. And... You've got to be in third gear or higher. Won't work in first or second. But unlike uh, the... Viridian cruise that I would have gotten is that uh, this thing is tied into the standard handlebar controls and it also has a display in the dash which shows me what the current set speed is. I've got it set on 26 miles an hour and of course I can increment it up or down by one or two by a mile an hour. Oh no right hand on the throttle I like that. I kind of put my uh, Garmin Zuma XT2 on the handlebars. That's probably where I'll keep it most of the time. Currently, I've just got it uh, plugged into the uh, USB outlet that the Tiger has. It's actually not a uh, USB. They've got a DIN outlet on it, which I've got an adapter plugged into that. But that's probably not my long-term solution. I probably will try to wire it into the bike's wiring at some point, but it's just been no time to do that. And it's nice to have it on there. So. Triumph uses a CAN bus uh, kind of a network system to connect up all the peripherals. It uh, reduces the wiring, and it's not a good idea to try to just splice into wiring for something like a Zumo. Uh, I think there's probably ways that this can be done, but the safest for me is just to use the uh, DIN port on the back, which is switched. And I do not have uh, one of my aftermarket TPMSs on this bike because it's got one built in. I think somewhere in there, the menus, I can find a way for it to show me what the tire pressures are, but I'll figure that out eventually. It'll give me warnings when the tire pressures go, I think, around 28 PSI, or at some level, it gives you a warning, so it's getting low. Oh, also, unlike the uh, V-Storm 800DE, this has tubeless tires on it, which, uh, that's good. I can just carry a plug patch kit with me. The bike is extremely smooth. This pavement feels rough on the GSX. And yeah, I can feel the, you know, little deals of the pavement, but uh, it smooths them out quite nicely. That was one of my big goals. I'll see what it's like when I get on this dirt road. My memory on this dirt road is that it's a pretty smooth one, so it's not gonna be any big test. But I'm not ready to do any big test on this bike until I've ridden it for a while. Really feel comfortable, about, comfortable with it. And at that point, decide if I want to push the limits a little bit or just how much I plan to do. That week we get back, depending on uh, weather. I had some big trips that I had wanted to do this summer. I was going to do a, a big loop through the Lassen Volcanic National Park. We drove through there once. It's just gorgeous. I wanted to do it on the motorcycle. And another one that's going to be a redo. They just getting me a ride to that uh, lake that I did, a big loop, and I had about six miles of dirt in it. And I think that was where I finally decided the GSX 8S just really wasn't going to work for what I wanted to do. And that big 250 mile loop I did early in the season, got to do that, and the ride past the Crash Crash State Park. I mean, there's all these things I want to redo on this bike, just kind of for comparisons. And if I want a direct comparison, I still have the Suzuki GSX 8S. 
I don't expect to be riding in a whole lot. I don't think the mileage on it's going to go up real fast at this point, but I don't know. I think basically this bike is going to do everything that good. That bike is a, a physically smaller bike, a lighter bike. So, I mean, if you were uh, using it in a city or something, I think it would be more convenient than the Tiger. But for the way I ride, I, I can't see much reason why I would ride the, uh, the Suzuki at this point. Boost strong if I had gotten it, sure, the v strong would have done the same things I want to do on this bike now. And on, I'll have to say, I mean, the, the Triumph Tiger 900 it was always on my radar. It's a bike that I would have liked to have, but the price on it is a whole lot higher than a v strong And I just didn't want to spend that much money. I thought it was uh, kind of out of reach. And I still would have thought it was out of reach, except when my wife saw that pretty blue Triumph Tiger at the gas station. And kind of said, have you thought about getting one of those? Okay, uh, Gumboot Lake would be straight ahead and to the right here. I'm staying on FR26 by going to the right. If I stayed on this all the way, it would take me past Craig's Crest State Park, but what I'm going to do is uh, a short ways up here. There'll be a sign to remind me what the FR number is, but uh, I'll take a right turn on a dirt road that's almost 14 miles that will take me up to what I call the Mount Eddy Trailhead, and I know it's got a different name. Once again, my senility is catching up to me, but I'll see what the trailhead name is up there when I get there. I've been there on a number of my rides and talked about it. Now I've got the rear shock set on its comfort setting. Everything pretty well soft as it could go, and keeping in mind that I'm not a real heavy rider. And I've been going over a lot of bad pavement, and it just is soaking it up, but it's not bottoming out at all. I noticed yesterday I was kind of set the same way and I hit some things fairly hard that I think would have bottomed out the GSX 8S, but didn't bottom out this. Again, this has a couple inches more suspension travel than the Suzuki had. It doesn't quite have as much suspension travel as the V-Strom 800DE. Of course, for that, if you wanted to try if you get the Rally or the Rally Pro, which would have as much. But it's got a lot more suspension than what the GSX 8S has, and I can flat fill with my riding boots on with the seat in the low position without having to lower the bike. And I kind of like that. Lowering the bike, it kind of changes the rear shock characteristics and changes your geometry a little bit also. Now, after having said that, I've lowered a lot of dirt bikes and my KLX I lowered a little bit too. And it takes a little while, but you can eventually get it dialed in where it, uh, a lowered bike will handle well. But it takes some effort to get there. It's kind of nice to have a bike that's already where you want it when you buy it. And here, okay, it's uh, Forest Route 45. Okay, so this is washboarded. I just stood up. I'm going to sit down again. I'm still getting used to this bike, but... And I know I've got some uh, decent dirt road tires on this. Again, if I was going through deep sand or deep mud or really deep gravel, you know, any of that kind of stuff, the tires might not have enough tread depth on them, but uh, for kind of any dirt riding you're going to do most of the time, these tires ought to be pretty good. It's certainly good on any kind of a gravel road. And if you do get into some uh, sand, silt, deeper gravel, all that stuff. At least they're not street bike tires. At some point I'll stop up here and I'll show what those tires look like. You know, now my traction control modes are such that uh, Oh, that's interesting. Okay, it's kicking in. I, I hit the throttle and it's uh, keeping the rear tire from spinning, so it's doing some good. It has an off-road mode that I believe turns off traction controls and maybe the ABS, I don't know. I'll, I'll figure all this stuff out later, but don't have a need for that yet. If you're trying to go up some hill with a lot of loose stuff on it, you'd probably want your traction control off. Otherwise, your tire would be trying to spin and it would be cutting your power. you never make it up. But this has all that stuff. It's just that... I don't remember the name of the lake down there. I've looked it up before, but it's a pretty lake. 
don't need a drone to fly up to see that one. You can see it really nicely from this road. FR-41. I think there's a way that I could change my traction control and a lot of other things while I'm riding. But I have not yet gotten it figured out yet. There we go, rider. Okay, so that's uh, for the rear shock. So I'm in the softest, just a single rider setting. It's also got rider with your pillion, your passenger, and then it's got a single rider with luggage, and then it's got a, a rider with a passenger and luggage. Leave it where it is when it's soft. Okay, damping. You can see there I've got it for comfort. That's good. I've got no destination. Just got some sort of a nav, I think, built into this. I'm not sure. I'll have to find out later. Music, I'm not doing that. Tagometer, if I want to see it right there, instead of just kind of looking at their little goofy display down there. That's <laughs> probably the most complained about weakest feature of this uh, TFT is just the, the tag display. Although you can get it like this. Oh, and here's my screen styles. I'm not going to try to go through them while I'm writing here, but you got a variety of screen styles. You change your colors. Low is uh, the black background that I have. If I go to high, that's white. Which is okay, but I like the black. And black is really their low. Service to, yeah, I'm going to have to figure out how to clear that. I've seen ways online to do it, but I haven't actually chased it down yet. I'm going to have to do an oil change before very long. That's about it for right now. There's more. I can't remember how to get into it at the moment, but uh, there's quite a bit more I can scroll through and try to figure out. No, I was thinking about uh, setting the power delivery to be a little softer. It doesn't have to be. This rider mode, really, it, it feels to me a lot like uh, the B Suzuki drive mode selector when it was in D. B, I mean. And it's got sport and other things that I'm sure are going to have a much twitchier throttle. Rider, rain, road, sport, off-road. Hmm. This button goes into setup to change the way different uh, rider modes behave, but it doesn't actually switch the bike into that rider mode. Gotta put it to rain. Leave everything else alone. This is the button that I should have been using to change driver mode. And this is the button that you push in to actually confirm that you're gonna switch the bike into this particular mode. I'll see what happens. Keep in mind, I haven't ridden on dirt road now in quite a while. I've been keeping off with the GSX, and I sold my KLX 300, so I'm not riding that on the dirt. Anyway, I'm in rain drive mode at the moment, which I think would be sort of like a Suzuki's drive mode C. It's got a lot more modes than that, though. It has an off-road mode, too, which I think pretty much turns off everything, traction control and ABS and you name it. If I remember right, to do the off-road mode, I think you have to stop the motorcycle. For the other mode, I think you can change while you're riding. Well, once again, I'm not ready to try all that at the moment. I'm just going to ride and enjoy this experience. And even though I got the rear shock and it's soft to setting, I'm hitting potholes. And they seem pretty smoothed out. They don't seem harsh, but it's also not bottoming. So a little more travel in the suspension and probably a little more premium uh, shock and fork on this that, uh, you know, one of the signs of a, a good fork like that is, uh, or shock, is you can take a, a sharp hit on it and it'll soften it out, but when you hit something big enough that it might bottom it, it'll uh, firm up uh, fairly quickly and you don't actually bottom. That awful clunk you get from either your forks or your uh, rear shock when you go too far with it. 
Anyway, I've hit some stuff hard enough that I think on the Suzuki it would have bottomed the fork of the shock, and it has not done this yet. Now, my understanding, a little bit I've read of it, is that there are people that will do some uh, moderately difficult off-roading with this particular motorcycle. It has enough ground clearance, enough suspension, a 19-inch front wheel, maybe not as good as a 21 for the more serious dirt riding, but still, it does pretty well. I mean, you think of all your other bikes with 19-inch front wheels that people take all over the place. A lot of your big BMW GSs and such have 19-inch front wheels. You can dirt ride with a 19-inch front wheel. 17, yeah, uh, I tried that. Not so much. Anything soft in the 17 just it instantly bogs down. I suppose if I was suicidal, I could set my cruise control on this dirt road. Somebody don't think I'll ever use cruise control on a dirt road. Now somebody will probably chip in and say, oh, I do it all the time, no problem. But <laughs> I do it, you never quite know when something's gonna kick you around a little bit. Oh, I'll try standing up again for a little bit just because uh, I get a little tired of sitting. I'll say this in raid mode, the throttle still feels uh, pretty responsive. I'm not sure that they uh, soften it up quite as much as what Suzuki did with their C drive mode. I didn't do it, but something I could have done with the GSX-8S is put a, a taller windshield on it. The reason I put the one on it that's on there, that MRA windscreen, is I thought it looked the neatest of all the ones that I looked at. And it does. It really looks cool. And it does take the wind pressure off your chest, but uh, it does nothing to take wind off of your helmet. Where this windscreen right here does take the wind off your helmet. But again, a, a bigger windscreen could be put on that Suzuki GSX-8S, but I don't know. In terms of the looks of the bike, I like the windscreen that's on it. Not taking long rides with it. It's been okay. And the way to tame the uh, wind noise is just wear earplugs. Except if you got a microphone in your helmet and you're trying to do video, it's a little more trouble for that. Just hit a pothole there, and it took it quite nicely. These boots I'm wearing are uh, Alpenstar Belize boots, and they've got a fairly thick sole on them. And I haven't adjusted the uh, gear shift lever on this yet, but I need to raise it up a little higher so it's easier to get my toe under it. Early days yet. I'll be making changes to the bike, kind of getting it the way that I like it. But so far, it's been pretty darn good. I've been kind of forgetting, but at some point up here, I need to get off the bike and just uh, walk it around it. And that's interesting. Uh, I go a little faster, and just uh, with the tires kicking over these bumps a little bit, I, I can feel it cutting out power to the engine. So I am going to maybe change this to off-road mode and see what happens. Okay. I pushed the little home button on the right there that got me to here. Now I see writing mode, so there's a little button on the left side here that I'll push in. Gets me to writing mode. Let's try sport. Off road. ABS. What do I want for ABS? Off road. Okay. What's the map? Off-road, okay. So it just kind of changes a whole lot of things. Traction control. Off, okay. What is TESS? Main menu. Comfort. TESS. I don't even know what it is. I better just leave it like it is. Got to look up what TESS is. And with that, back to here. Okay, ready to go again. Off-road mode. Now what's going to happen if I twist the throttle? That actually had traction control that came on. So does traction, what is that, what's traction control do? Now the question would be, did I actually succeed in changing it to that? 
maybe I did something wrong where it really didn't do it. So, let's try that again. Here we go. Riding modes. Off-road. Well, I thought I had it turned off, but I can see on the instrument panel that it is clicking on. So I still have a lot to learn about this bike. Yeah, I wish I had more time today. I still have to get uh, home and things I have to do to get ready for that uh, trip we're leaving early in the morning. So I just uh, kind of excited about this uh, new motorcycle. I'd like to learn everything about it right off the bat, but it's complicated enough. It has enough things going on here that uh, it's going to take me some time. Something about, else about this motorcycle, it's, you can see it, but uh, I haven't talked about it yet. The uh, rearview mirrors are these bar-end mirrors. They're fairly small. And you can see where the mounts for the um, original mirrors were. And at some point, I'm probably going to take off these bar-end mirrors and put some uh, more conventional mirrors on it. We'll see. I might get used to them, so I don't like them, but... They're certainly right out there and exposed if you drop the bike, but then again, you don't want to drop the bike, right? Nobody ever drops a 500-pound motorcycle in the dirt. No, it never happens. By the way, I'm not at all confident of my ability to lift this bike up if I drop it without some assistance. So I did uh, some time ago buy uh, what's called a moto winch by Eastbound. And... With that, I'm pretty sure I could get this thing back up right from just about anywhere. But my goal is just don't drop it. My uh, Suzuki, so I, I dropped it in the garage, just rolled it off the side stand. And that's, it hasn't been dropped aside from that once, rolling off the side stand. And I did some dirt riding with it, a lot of stuff. Well, this is a little bit bigger, not a lot, but just slightly taller bike than the GSX 8S which could make it a little more prone to tipping it over, but I don't think hugely so. I'm not really concerned about it at this point. I guess until I do. Now, if I was some hotshot YouTuber trying to show how great this bike was, I'd be uh, drifting around these corners. I won't be doing that for a long time, maybe never. Ask me if I ever used to do that when I was racing, of course, but... I just saw a doe and her fawn off to the left. I didn't get the helmet turned around so the camera would have seen it. Yeah, again, it's a little further to the ground than it used to be, but not bad. A little harder to swing the leg over it, but ah, come on. <laughs> not too bad, I'll get better. And I'll leave the camera on for a moment. And boy, this bike was just so showroom clean before. Now the tire looks a little bit dirty. But again, that's the Dunlop Trail Max, Max Mission, which is a... Oh, it could be a 50-50 tire. Maybe it's a 40-60 or something. But, you know, it's got some, some traction to it. It's a bike, and uh, it's got a plastic skid plate that does go under it. I'm going to, at some point, have to put a real one on, I'm sure. But you can see it's got some it's got some ground clearance. A lot more than my street bike does. It's got those crash guards on it. Got the same Dunlop Trailmax Mission front tires on it. This this motorcycle has an excellent standing riding position. I'm standing on it right now. Feels like a dirt bike. A big dirt bike. <laughs> but it feels more like the KLX than a street bike. As I get more comfortable on this bike, which I'm getting there, I think this is gonna be a really fun dirt road bike. I think it's only another mile or so. I'm just now really starting to get the feel for it and feel comfortable on this road. Standing up and be willing to gas it a little bit. Well, 
I've bought lots of used motorcycles over the years, but uh, recently the uh, KLX 300 and the GSX 8S were brand new, so I had to go through a break-in period for them. And I'm kind of enjoying not having to do it on this bike. It's already broken in. I suspect somewhere there's a way to do it, but uh, the Suzuki I like because you can always see what drive mode you're in and uh, what traction level you're at. And at least the way I've got it uh, configured at the moment, it's not showing that information to me. I have no idea if I'm actually in raid mode right now. That's what I tried to set it in. But if it is, all I can say is this uh, throttle still has plenty of power every time you twist it. No, this bike really goes well over uh, dips, potholes. Just went over some stuff right there and just soaked it up. Doesn't bottom out. Just goes over it smoothly. Now this is a pretty rough rocky road through here. And I'm off of it now. Okay, here's uh, one of the trailheads for uh, getting up to Mount Eddy. And I'm just almost up to the Mount Eddy trailhead too. Deadfall Meadow trailhead. A lot of people up there hiking today. Somebody with a horse up there. Well, this bike uh, pulls and runs as well at low RPM as what the um, GSX 8S does. So. Very uh, forgiving motor, just like the Suzuki's. Parks Creek Trailhead. That's what I was forgetting. That's what I also call the Mount Eddy Trailhead. That's where I would start from if I was going to climb Mount Eddy. Well, at least I have one display here where I've got a numerical tachometer going, which much more informative than the display they've got. It's really hard to look at it to what your RPM is. I think I said this earlier, the bike makes 94 horsepower, and I forget what the torque is, it's up there pretty high, and obviously it's a bigger motor, it makes more horsepower and torque than what the Suzuki does, but uh, I guess what I was going to say though, the 2024 models, the one after this, uh, they increased the horsepower from 94 to maybe 106, I don't remember exactly what, so I was curious, I looked at the uh, dyno curve of this compared to the 2024, and I think up to about 7,500 RPM, they just overlaid each other exactly, no difference. And then when you get to that higher RPM range, 7,500 up to 10,000 or so, the 2024 just keeps climbing on torque and horsepower. Well, this one doesn't, but where you actually live and ride all day, the bike's power, this is the 2024, are the same. Now, if you're on a racetrack or getting crazy with your friends out in some twisties, you know, that extra power may make a difference, but for uh, real world riding, I don't think there's any difference between this and the new one. So when I have the uh, numerical tack displayed on the dash like I do, I'm really aware of what it's, where the motor is operating, but uh, if I don't have that displayed, the little tack they have on the screen, it's so hard to see. You really don't know. It's got a louder uh, muffler. Then uh, the Suzuki has, I really like the quiet. On the other hand, I mean, this got a growl to it. lets you know you got something under the hood here. Given a choice, I'll take the uh, Suzuki, but on the other hand, it's kind of fun to have a, a little bit of a growly motor also. Well, I can safely say this has plenty of power to scare yourself, but then so does the Suzuki, so there you have it. Well, until I load up some luggage or um, Jolene goes along with me on this bike, I'm never going to have to switch this out of the one rider mode and the softest shock setting. I mean, it's got plenty of uh, shock for my weight, the way I ride. Well, the menus and controls you have to use to uh, change your um, some of your preferences, like uh, rider mode and so forth, uh, are more complicated by far on this than they are on the Suzuki. I wish they uh, had a simplified interface like that, but then they got a lot more stuff too, so. The speedometer on this Triumph is just about like the Suzuki. It reads high. It's not uncommon. That's where it's nice having the um, Garmin Zumo, because I can at a glance see with the uh, far more accurate GPS miles per hour with the Okay, I'm getting on to the interstate very soon. 
Yes, and I'm going to show it 60. The Zoom was said I was doing 56. And the cruise control is set at 70, and the Zumbo is giving me a solid at 65 miles an hour. I don't know how to work this kind of thing for uh, the audio here. After the Hurricane Utah video, I've got nine videos on the Tiger queued up that I still have to, to create, so there's a lot more coming.